This is by far the simplest and easiest setup. There's no rewiring, there's no cutting, and we don't have to set up a sub panel. This is gonna be exactly like if we were hooked up into shore power at a 30 amp campsite. First thing we're gonna talk about is the box that we put everything in. We didn't put it into the storage area. We wanted to put it in this trailer tongue box that we got from Harbor Freight. Um, we had to put it in backwards because the top wouldn't open up and open up all the way. Plus we had a whole bunch of other things in the way. So the easiest thing was to install it backwards. And here's the heart of the system, the Lion Energy Safari UT1300. It's a 105 amp hour battery. I put a link into the description to a much better video from All About RVs that goes into this in better detail. Next thing we have is the 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter that we got off of Amazon. Uh, this is highly rated and has everything you need. It was easy to set up, easy to mount, and easy to hook up. Next we have the battery monitor. Here's the shunt for the Victron BMV712 smart battery monitor. We mounted it in our universal docking station in the storage area, just a little bit easier than running all the wires. Here's a look at our solar panel kit, uh, 350 watt uh, flexible solar panels that we got off of Amazon. We'll be making a video later on how we hooked this up. It was all pre-wired, uh, so it was really simple and easy. With this, there's no rewiring. These are all the original wires that were already here. Here's the positive wire that was hooked up to the batteries, the negative wire that was hooked up to the batteries. I added this uh, temperature gauge that goes to the solar panels and this cable that goes to the battery monitor. Everything is routed right back into the RV, so there's no rewiring of anything. Use the original wires to hook up to the shunt right here, the output uh, terminal on the shunt and the positive wire that was going to the batteries getting hooked up to the positive output terminal. I also have the temperature gauge uh, from the solar panels to help us regulate when we're in freezing weather. So here's how I hooked everything up. I have one wire going to the input side of the shunt, one wire hooking the two negative posts, one wire hooking the two positive posts, a negative wire going to the negative terminal on the inverter, and one thing I didn't show is another negative going to the output of the shunt. This allows your battery monitor to function properly. Here's a quick diagram of the battery setup. I used one watt gauge wire that's rated at 150 amps. You can see 150 amps equals approximately 1800 watts. I know what you're thinking. Did he just say 1800 watts on a 3000 watt system? Yes, for a couple reasons. One, the voltage is really 13.8 to 12.8. So that was just an approximation. Two, it's 150 amps of continuous power. You're not going to be over 2,000 watts for a long period of time. Otherwise, you'll deplete your battery bank. So what do I have a 3,000 watt inverter? I may have a short-term need for a little bit more power. For example, a microwave uses about 1,300 to 1,600 watts of power. If I have other electronics drawing on the system, I may need that little bump for a short period of time over 2,000 watts. I'm also using a 10 gauge wire uh, that's rated at 30 amps hooking up to the inverter, which goes across and hooks up to the 30 amp receptacle on the other side of the RV. Push the wire up through some conduit to the 30 amp receptacle. If I would have had a little bit more forethought and was a little bit smarter on this, I would have hooked it up on the right hand side, um, hooked it up on the left hand side. We just hook it up just like we're boondocking, like if you're hooking up to regular shore right into the RV. So the number one rule, if you're gonna be using this system, is there's only one little thing that you have to make sure that you do, and it's right over here. You need to locate your distribution box. Mine is located here in our bedroom. You go down to your distribution box. You need to locate your converter fuse. So ours is right here. You see that mine is off, and that allows everything to charge without the converter trying to uh, recharge my batteries. One thing I will mention about the converter is that we did upgrade our converter to a lithium battery converter that will bring up the voltage to the 14.6, which tops off our batteries. If you get the standard converter that was in here, or just a regular standard converter, it would only bring up our voltage to about 13.6 to 13.8, and it wouldn't completely top off and fully charge our batteries. I see a lot of videos trying to sell easy start kits, um, 
and people have asked or wondered if their system can start their AC. As you can see here, uh, the AC is using about 15 to 1600 watts. I know it says 1200, but the solar panels add about 300 on here. Um, and we were able to start our AC system with no problems. We didn't need any kit or do anything um, out of the ordinary. I do for safety precaution, turn on the fan for about 20 or 30 seconds. So it's not a big kick to the system uh, when the AC finally turns on. So that's it. This is our system. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, uh, like what do we do in the winter?